Hey everybody, welcome to stage two of the Landspeeder painting tutorial. So what we're going to be doing today is painting the interior of the vehicle. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I really like painting the interiors of the vehicles. It just adds another dimension of uh, interest and, uh, and also particularly with the, the iron hands being a predominantly black army creates some necessary contrast in order to make the model look a little bit more appealing on the tabletop. So before we get painting, let's just have a quick look at what we'll be needing for this particular stage of the build. Let's come and have a look. Okay, here's a, a few of the items that we're going to be needing for completing this stage of the build, which is uh, painting the interior of the vehicle. The first thing which we're going to need is an airbrush. Now, uh, I don't use particularly expensive airbrushes. Uh, the reason being is that I have no aspirations of being the next HR Geiger. And uh, for what we do, painting these... Um, these models. We don't need a particularly sophisticated uh, airbrush. This one here is a uh, is made by a company or imported by a company here in Australia, which is an automotive supplier called Super Cheap Auto, and uh, it's basically a knockoff of a Badger 100. It's a two-stage airbrush, and uh, you can change the needle, you can change the cones on it if if you want, and uh, it's it's a it's a pretty good brush. And I think I pick them up from uh, Super Cheap Auto for about thirty dollars and uh, it, it really well and truly does the job. We'll also need some, uh, some thinners. I really like using the, uh, the Tamir Acrylic Paint Thinner X20A. Um, I go through a lot of this sort of stuff and uh, it's a very, very good quality thinner. That's for acrylic paints. We're also gonna need some uh, oil thinners or some Artist Turpentine. The only reason why I get the Artist Turpentine as opposed to just normal turps is that this here uh, has practically no smell whereas uh, regular Terps is obviously has quite a strong odour. We're going to need some uh, semi-gloss clear. Uh, I like using this Tamir product. It's extremely high quality. It is pretty expensive though, uh, but it, um, it has a really nice finish and, and uh, doesn't tend to bloom either. And very reliable and the, uh, the nozzle on the spray can is exceptionally uh, high quality, so you get a really nice spray from it. Obviously, we'll need our uh, trusty uh, hobby knife, again with a nice fresh blade in it. Uh, just a couple of brushes uh, for applying some washes and doing some detail. A sponge for uh, doing some of the chipping on the on the uh, interior shortly. Some oil paints. I've got a, a ivory black here and uh, a brown. These are by Windsor and Newton. Uh, there are other brands available of oil paints. Uh, Art of Spectrum is one that comes to mind. Um, I really like Windsor and Newton. They've been around for a long time. A very reputable uh, brand. We've got some uh, Tamir masking tape here. It's very important that you get low tack masking tape. If you get um, just normal masking tape, you'll end up peeling your paint off when you remove it. We're also gonna need some, uh, some earbuds uh, for cleaning. A palette, I always start with a new palette whenever I uh, begin a new project, just for mixing paints and, and uh, doing whatnot with. These are really cheap, I think they're about a dollar each. Uh, some pipettes. These here, I use these for mixing paints, um, getting uh, the thinners out of the, the various um, containers that they come in. Uh, they're just disposable. Uh, I buy these in lots of a thousand, I think, at a time. So uh, they're quite difficult to get inexpensively unless you buy massive amounts of them. And uh, some jars. Again, these are just uh, generic glass jars that I get uh, from a, uh, a supplier here in Brisbane when I want to mix some paints and make and, and keep them for a while. I just mix them up in these and uh, just keep them lying around. And obviously just some paints as well. So I've got here charred on granite, commando khaki, uh, black and uh, white. And that there will be the, uh, the basis of what we'll be using today for painting the interior of the vehicle. So let's get on with it. What I've gone and done just for this stage is uh, isolated the parts of which I'll be painting the interior of. So what I've got here is the chassis. There'll be a bit of detail in this region here that I need to paint for the interior. The crew compartment and the engine room. A couple of the doors and these side panels. There'll just be a little bit of interior detail that needs to be added here. So let's head over to the uh, spraying booth and uh, let's get started. Okay, so for this stage, before we get started, basically what we want to do is just mix up some paint for the airbrush. And uh, all I do is I just grab whatever color it is I want to airbrush onto the model and uh, tip it into one of these glass jars and then start mixing it with the, uh, the thinner to get it to the appropriate consistency, which uh, is sometimes a little bit of trial and error, but it should be something similar to milk. And 
um, you just keep on adding small amounts of the thinner with the pipette into the uh, into the jar till you get that consistency right. Um, always remember as well to stir the paint whenever you're uh, getting that consistency right instead of shaking it. You don't want air bubbles getting into your paint. And then once I get the consistency right, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just get a new pipette and uh, put some paint into the cup, just a small amount to begin with to uh, test the consistency. And once the consistency, I'm satisfied that it's, it's gonna flow through the airbrush uh, nicely, I'll, uh, I'll then uh, put a bit more in there and, and then we'll get started. So I'll just spray one piece uh, just to show you how it sort of uh, goes on. And then once, um, once I've done that, I'll, I'll go ahead and spray the rest of my model and I'll, I'll do some just some still shots for the remainder. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I hope this is gonna be clear enough, but I'll just do a small portion here and um, then I'll take some stills of it so you can have a closer look. But... So as you can see, it takes a few passes to get the, uh, the desired coverage, but it's a, it's a really nice look uh, once it's done. And uh, we will be highlighting this a little bit with, um, with a bit of Skull White mixed with the, uh, the Commando Car Key. But for the time being, I'll just uh, press on with this and get all the parts done and I'll do some stills so everyone can have a closer look. I've now completed the base coat of Commando Car Key onto the interior parts of the land speeder. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just add some very subtle uh, white highlights just to some of the, uh, the more pronounced regions of the exterior of the kit just to help make that Commando Car Key pop a little bit and give it a bit more uh, of a third dimension to its appearance. So I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll put some stills up in just a moment. Now that I've put the Commando car key onto the interior detail, what I'm going to go ahead and do is add some weathering to the vehicle's interior. This is just to enhance the level of realism. So when we're adding chipping to the model, which is what we're going to do now, basically you apply it in areas where you'd consider would receive a little bit of wear and tear. So some of those areas might be around the center console unit here, uh, around the edges, and uh, perhaps even around these instrument panels here, uh, definitely um, on the uh, the floor area around what I think is the engine, and uh, on the walls, and, and there's also a little bit of detail just in this region here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just put that chipping on. I won't sit here and make you watch me do it, but what I will do is just uh, quickly show you, being such a small model, what I'll do with this sponge is uh, I'll just break off a small piece of it like so, and uh, I'll use these tweezers, which I have to, uh, I might even make that a bit smaller actually. Uh, I'll use these tweezers that I have here, uh, which have this uh, lock on them, just makes, makes things a bit easier to use. And I'll, um, I'll pop that piece of sponge in those tweezers there. And then with my uh, chart on granite, which I've pop, put here on my palette, I'll just uh, put a fairly liberal amount on the sponge. And what I'll do is I'll then just start uh, dabbing this around the areas where I think we'd see a bit of wear. And again, you don't have to go over the top with it, but I find being bold with it is a, is a good way to go. So I'll just uh, place that on there, and what I'll do is I'll put some uh, close-up stills so you can just see what I've gone ahead and done. So from here, now that I've uh, put that chipping on, I'm gonna give the model a coat of uh, TS79, which is a semi-gloss clear. The reason that I do that is when we apply the oil washers, which is what we're doing next, it helps the oil washers flow over the model better and collect in some of the recesses. Now that the clear coat has been applied, what we can go ahead and do is apply some washes of oil paints. I'm going to have one made up mostly of the black and another one made up mostly of the brown and they'll be applied in various ways to create some contrast on the kit. 
We want to make sure that they're adequately thinned with the terps and it's always best to err on the side of caution and to create a wash which is too thin where you need to apply two or three or four coats than to have one too thick and, and it just looks a bit gluggy and, and, and clumsy. So when you're applying the washers, always aim to put at least two coats on that have been very thin and that way you'll have a far more realistic effect rather than just trying to knock it out in one hit. So I'm going to go ahead and get on with this now and I'll show you some stills in a moment. Now that I've finished applying all of the oil paint washes to the model, what I'm going to move on to now is just finishing off the detail on the cockpit. So painting up all these dials, getting the marines sorted out, the backrest and whatnot. Because I've had to do this a little bit out of sequence, I'm not going to go into how, I've, how I'm going to weather the space marines, apply the decals, paint all the, the buttons and whatnot at this particular stage. I'm going to go into a lot more detail on that in future posts. So I'm going to skip ahead and go ahead and do all that myself now. And then I'm going to show you the last stage, which will be actually assembling the model, masking up the areas that I want concealed for painting the actual body itself, and, uh, and um, then completing the model in the final stages. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll put some stills up once I've done that, and then I'll come back to you with the last post on uh, assembling the model for the uh, painting of the actual body itself. Okay, now that the weathering has been done for the cockpit, what I'm going to do is start masking the uh, cockpit up so that I can begin painting the exterior of the model. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to be using, uh, like I said earlier, uh, the Tamiya masking tape, but I'm also going to be using this product here, which is a Hummel product, which is basically a paint on mask. And uh, when it sets, it's, it's quite rubbery. You can just peel it off. I'm going to be using that uh, for these areas here. They're too small and fiddly to worry about um, masking them with the tape. So I'm just going to paint on this mask and, and uh, once it's ready, I'm just going to peel it off in, uh, in a few weeks or whenever I get around to finishing the model. So I'm going to get on with this and uh, I'll have some photos for you to have a look at. Here's some mask that's been applied to some of the kit, as well as some other shots of some of the masking which I did when I was making the kit, just to show you what I went through while I was assembling it with the trimming of the masking or whatever. I also added some uh, detail just on the edges of the rocket pods, just using the yellow and black hazard stripes. I like to dent them up a little bit and weather them just to... Uh, make it again look a little bit more interesting and consistent with the rest of the kit. Before we move on to the next stage, which is applying the decals, what I just wanted to quickly explain is what we've done here now is I've gone and masked up the entire kit and then I've gone along with the uh, black undercoat and just given it another very light coat just to tie in any areas which may have got, got some overspray when I was doing the interior and also if there was any uh, blemishes from any glue overspill or anything like that. So now that we've completed this stage of the kit, what we're going to move on to now is the next chapter which is applying decals.